pavement, heat. Managed to get a spot underneath a great big cypress tree though, so there's a little bit of shade on the car. And I should, I, hey, what's up garden friends? Jeff here, how's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well, I'm great. That's botanicals. There's an aeroid show going on, which I'm not attending, so it's like a full day thing and it's very expensive. But there are a bunch of vendors here. Mundaflor is here, Equigenera is here. Go in, see some plants, see what's for sale. The place, if it's the same as how they did the orchid show, then I don't even know how much I'll be able to film. This might all be completely pointless, but it, last time it was in a very, very, very small little room, but I'll do my best. Probably gonna be some quick shots of some things here in just a moment. I would walk around the garden and show some things off, but uh, it's 101 degrees outside right now. And have to say, gotta love the dedication. This place is fairly busy. I thought, okay, I'll pop out here at 11 a.m. on a Thursday, one of the hottest days forecasted this summer, and then it won't be that crowded. But no, there's still a lot of people here, which I think is great. People are getting out in the morning. Oh, look at the succulents. This is fun. I didn't see these out here. Well, it was winter last time I was out here. It's neat looking euphorbias and a giant echeveria and some cool little cactus. This is neat. Fun stuff. More of the same things. Yeah, I don't know. Let's go inside, have a look at some plants. Well, good news. Aeroid show is not in the same place the orchid show was. Oh, well, I actually don't know if that's good news. Look at the chilui. Isn't that beautiful? This stuff is all over the garden right now and the climate chart in the background. It is hot. It might be worth walking around a little bit to have a look at the gardens though. Maybe. <laughs> we'll see how I'm feeling here in a moment. At least it's a drier heat. By the time this video comes out, it will have cooled off an awful lot. There are so many times I'm complaining about being cold during summer, so I'm trying to not whine about it. We can go through here. I think the Amorphophallus titanums are in bloom or just going out of bloom. I don't know if they'll still be in here and on display or not. Yeah, I don't see them, but it's still beautiful in here, isn't it? Citrus and camellia. This is the camellia house at the botanicals. Try and move things fairly slowly so we can have a look. I have a lot of videos at the botanicals. I will put down below in the description if you want like longer tours of things. This house is looking different from last time I was here. It's like they took some of the fountains out. Still really pretty though. This is neat. Look familiar? Lemon blush. Yeah, it's a money plant. But it's not all braided up and funky looking. Love how those thicken out. They get really neat looking. Siam ruby bananas. Yeah, this is neat. The one wistia. Can you read it? Do I have to read it to you? They only grow two leaves in its entire lifetime. Leathery leaves, shaped like straps that curl up at the base, plant ages. Gymnosperms producing cones instead of flowers. They can live up to 1,500 years without ever shedding their original leaves. That's a cool plant. Lots of little palms over here. That's fun to see. I have a pemba. Dipsis pembana. Dipsis pembana down there. Ugh. Tavolo palm, high plateau coconut. These are neat. Very popular palms for people who are trying to grow cold hardy ones. They have the baby queens. Haven't seen those around in a long time. They were popular for a few years and they just kind of vanished. That's a Chimaduria plumosa. And a queen over here, or a type of queen. What is Serensis? Serensis? You know, it's hard when you actually don't ever hear other people say the word and then I have to do it myself. I'm sure I butchered it. It's a neat type of queen if you're ever interested in growing them. Well, this is how do I get back over there? I need to be over there to get to the aeroid show. <laughs> That's fine. We'll just go this way. Can have a look at the ponds and the ruscus and some of the pretty plantings that they have around here. Can I go through there? Maybe? I think so. Got the water mimosa down there. Those are fun. Some thalias and cannas. I actually don't think this connects anywhere. I haven't been over in this area in such a long time. It's unusual for me to not know my way around here. Oh, here we go. This is fantastic. I need something like this in my backyard. Heavenly to walk through this Mediterranean setup. Rosemary and yews and ficus, hardy figs over here. And look at these Taylor junipers. So beautiful. I mean, come on. Look at that. That looks so good. And it doesn't smell overwhelmingly junipery either. Actually, very. Pleasant. We have this nice middle area. 
full of begonias. That looks great too. Everything's just looking nice in spite of the heat. All right, I'm, I'm lost. I'm officially lost. I know where I am. I just don't know where the aeroid show is. I'm guessing maybe it's in this little area over here, this little glass building maybe, because he pointed down this direction and this is as far as this direction goes. Yeah, I think it's over here through the windows. I see a table full of plants. It's gotta be where it is. Yep, tropical plant sale. Walked in there, looking at those plants, telling myself, I don't really need anything. That's obvious. I mean, nobody needs any of these things. I'm like, I really like the aeroids that I have, and I have that mentality. I shouldn't say aeroids. Cylindrons and anthuriums, that is not just aeroids. But you all know how I grow my plants, and it's, you got to be a survivor. And I grabbed some things here that are not survivors. Probably some bad choices, but also some very exciting choices. It's nice being able to actually see the plants in person versus on a screen. Because I know there are some plants I've had on a wish list for a pretty long time through uh, Equa Genera. And uh, then I saw them in person, I was like, eh, maybe not. And then I saw some others, I was like, oh yeah, those are much nicer than I thought they would be. I thought about walking around the garden some more, but I have a bag full of plants and it's very hot. So I don't think that's a good idea. Oh, there's another table full of stuff up there though that I didn't see when I came in. And by the way, this is y'all's fault. I wasn't even going to come to this, but people started messaging me. Sean, Tim, Tim Kent Art on Instagram. He's an artist. Y'all gotta check out his page. He does some of the most beautiful artwork, airbrushing and woodwork, carpentries involved. Oh, it's ferns ferns and some annuals. I need some of these wooden baskets, but as I recall, those are very, very pricey here. And it's too hot. It's too damn hot. I don't care enough. And um, some bird of paradise. I walked all the way up here, 103 degrees. Just for, Why did I do that? Dopamine and adrenaline. That's why I got a plant high going on right now and the brain's just feeling good and wanted to get some more things. 
I'm gonna check out how much those baskets are and then go back to the house and um, well nothing gonna give it a few days it needs to cool off before I do much with these plants but then do some repots and have a look at what I got okay home and a few days later so hot really had to wait for things to cool off can you tell that it's dark out did I adjust the hopefully it's not too dark before I can get around to the plants themselves need to well that got really hairy lots of dog hair in there need to make up some uh, potting mix an aeroid mix and i'm just gonna wing it with what i have around here go ahead get a whole bunch of bark in here more than that why am i not capable of tearing a hole big enough to dump this stuff out there big bark lots of big bark chips and i have a few bags of that newt mix which is just coconut chip husk and or i should say coconut chip fiber and what's the perlite? Big chunky perlite. You can't have a great view of what's going on in there. You'll get to see it later. Didn't realize I had so much of that newt mix. Found another bag. I'm going to go ahead and just get it all in there. I don't think I need to be bulk mixing my own stuff considering how much of this I ended up having. That's all right. Yeah, I try to bulk mix the big chunky stuff, the things that I want for aeration. And I'll probably put a little bit of the sphagnum moss in here. I have a big bag of it over here and I will add sphagnum as I go actually putting up the plants individually because not all of them are going to want as much moisture. Some are gonna want, some want less, some want more. Toby getting ready to get in the pool. Yeah, things are messy. I've been filming, filming lots of videos. You gonna do it? You need to get in there, Toby. I don't feel like drying you off. It takes a long time. All right, so I have the big bark and then I have the uh, cocoa chip and fiber. And I'm gonna put in some of this very small bark, the number nine from Orchiata. I like my mixes to have a lot of various sizes and textures. So I can get some sphagnum in there, not too much, that's nice. Nice quality long fiber sphagnum. There's some leca in there too, just because pumice is so hard to come by these days. I never see pumice around anywhere. I use the leca instead. I could try and mix this up with my hands. I think I'll just put the lid on here and shake it up. And that is going to be good to go for the morning can get to potting up these plants and having a look at what i got well can you say hi i gotta say hi looking away huh good morning is the focus working that's what i'm checking here moving things around seeing if the camera can handle it go out go back in thinking we're good pumpkin's being cute what you doing mm Hmm. okay seems okay what y'all don't know, my lens broke. So I have one of my old school lenses on here that I never use anymore because the image stabilization, the image stabilization, <clears throat> because I'm leaving all that in there. Because the image stabilization is terrible on this. It's a cheap lens, doesn't work well. Welcome to, this is new flooring. That's why there's a printer in China on my table. It's so sad because it's such a nice lens, such a beautiful lens that has worked fairly well over the years. You can do this. You can do it. It's moving around like it doesn't want to focus on this. No lens is perfect, right? But this one, oh, so good. So good. Might be able to get it fixed. I don't know. You have to send it away. It takes a few months. Costs a few hundred dollars. It would make more sense to just buy a new one. But I think I have things sorted out. It's actually been another two days since the last clip because I've been trying to figure out this camera situation. Like I said, I think this will work. Just need to put it up on a tripod. It's not very smooth. I'm being very careful to not move my arm. Hi, honey. You say hello? No? Give everyone a kiss. That was so nice. Nice pumpkin. Good kissies. Wanna go outdoors? Yeah? Wanna go potty? Good boy. Where's your collar? Why are you naked? Before I get going, I need to stick with what I was saying. Get y'all up on the tripod. That way nobody ends up being motion sick here. I'm trying to get these plants potted up. I was so disappointed when I realized that the problem was the lens and not the camera. I was actually hoping that something was wrong with this camera. And it's a nice camera, but I've had it for a long time. The Sony a7S II. Wonderful camera, but there are so many more amazing cameras that have come out since this one. And if I were gonna be spending four figures, that's what it's gonna cost to get a new lens. I'd rather do it on a new camera body because there's so many more things you can do with a new camera body than a new lens. A new lens is just gonna be right back where it was before. That's the thing is a new lens isn't exactly cheaper. It, that's a, that is a nice lens. It doesn't cost much less than just getting a whole new camera. But oh well, we'll figure it out. It's okay, could be worse. Excited to have a look at these plants. Some of them aren't looking all that hot, but that's not surprising. At least I'm not surprised by it. I should pot these up as we go, which means that I'm 
totally unprepared for this. I have the mix blended up. We're gonna be looking at things for a little bit longer, maybe get a nicer background table over here for everyone and pots, gonna need pots. Now, if you watched my last video, then you've seen all of these fun things, these self-watering containers. I intentionally did that in a separate video. That way I wouldn't feel <laughs> obligated to go over the pottery in the same video. I feel like that should be something separate. This feels weird, this lens, it's so tiny. It looks like it's not pointed at anything. It's because it wasn't. It wasn't pointed at anything I was doing. At least he got a little bit of it. The incredible excitement of me setting pots on a table. Okay, all set up. This is weird. I'm not used to using a lens that isn't wide angle. I was just about to say, look at how beautiful the sky is right now, but you can't, you can't see it because this lens is not that wide. It's gonna show up on this camera anyways because the F stop on this lens is up really high. If you don't know, the lower the F value, the more light that the lens can take in. Therefore, the better the picture looks in darker lighting. So I actually probably shouldn't even be doing this on this camera right now. I probably should be doing it when there's light out, but I don't want to scorch the plants because the plants are already sad. See, here's the first one. Because you know, they're directly imported and then triple digit temperatures kept them in the house. Air in the house right now is very dry because I have a brand new, very fancy whole house dehumidifier. Not something I ever thought I would want, but while having the floors put in, I think I may have talked about this in a different video, I'm not sure, but uh, found out that the floor was wet. There's condensation coming up onto the floors from the uh, AC ducts underneath them because of the humidity. So now the air in the house is extremely dry, which, these were not a fan of, but they also just weren't a fan of life in general because a lot of these, specifically the ones from Equigenera, they just got here. Fresh off the plane, so I'm expecting them to look <laughs> kind of sad. I think that they would have looked better if I could have gotten them potted up right away, but they'll be fine. This one doesn't even look all that sad compared to some of the others that you're about to see. Look at that leaf. Isn't that just beautiful? Do you know what it is? Comment down below. Really, that's with the lens all the way out. That's as wide, that's terrible. I was thinking I'd be able to live with this for a couple of weeks, no shot. Philodendron Luxuriance. There's the tag, probably can't see it because this lens isn't going very far. These right here, the ones I'm about to open are from Equigenera. I'm gonna try and open them up in the order of who I got them from, but I, I don't know, it's been a few days, so I have honestly forgotten a lot about where I got them from. Prices on everything were fantastic. I wanted a Luxurians for a decently long time, so I'm glad that they had them. Of course they had them, if they had everything there. Looking nice, the sphagnum is still moist because I made sure to give these a good watering last night. They did at one point dry out, and there aren't a ton of roots on here. You can see this is, it's not a cutting. I mean, technically, yes, it is a cutting, but not like it's in poor shape like you would expect with a cutting. Is this container gonna work? I don't know. I think it'll be fine. I did add some long fiber sphagnum moss into, oh, turbo, turbo. Turbo just ran right across one of the plants I had sitting down next to me. It's okay, he didn't know. I added the long fiber sphagnum just a little bit into that mix I was putting together last night, but I don't think the philodendron is going to need too much of that, but I'm gonna want some of it in there. I also added a few scoops of aquarium gravel. You just saw the tank inside. That's one of the reasons I made the transition between last night's shot to this night's, this night's, this night's shot from in the house so that that would be more self-explanatory. You could see there's a tank in my kitchen that I had to take apart because a new floor is being put down. And there is the planted aquarium gravel that was in there. And I've just tossed a cup of that into this batch right here. I did that with my last mix that I used over the winter and the plants really responded quite well to it. I got some excellent roots by having that in their mix. And this pot is just, it's the perfect height. Look at that. It really is just perfect. I could maybe pack a little bit more in there. I have gone through some of my other aeroids before and just lightly sprinkled some of that on top. When you water it, it will mix its way into there. As long as it's a nice airy mix, that's not going to hurt anything. When this gets watered, that will work its way down in there. It has nutrient in it because it's made for aquatic plants. More specifically, it's designed to get roots going and have some grit to it and fall apart over time, which it does. It falls apart and gets very muddy. But every plant I've ever used it in a aeroid mix with, they have always rooted very, very well. So yeah, there's the first one. The kind of 
travel, banged up luxurian. This is the only one they had. There weren't other options, at least not that I saw while I was there. So that's, that's, that's what it is. It's fine. It's going to grow. Look at that growth. See that right there? It'll put out some new leaves and look great. Luxurians, this is what I should have said when I first opened it up. The Luxurians has a very large, beautiful, green, velvety, heart-shaped leaf with very distinct veining on the inside. That's going to be the case for pretty much everything here. So from this point on in the video, just I base, I just got the things because I like them. So I thought they were pretty. That's all there is to it. Is that the best we can do with this amount of light? You can't do any better than that. Oh, well, that's unfortunate. I had higher hopes, but it's not that bright out. It's not that dark out either. And I can't just wait for more light because these plants would cook. They can't sit out in the sun. Okay, couldn't take it anymore. Went back to the broken lens. And I think that as long as I stay from here and out will be good and it'll stay in focus. I know nobody cares because chances are in editing, I will spend a long time trying to match up all the clips so that the lighting looks really good. The reality is that's all stuff that's going to take a long time. Oh, this one's pretty. Look at that. Look at that leaf. A great big leaf. Regale. Another gorgeous plant from Equigenera. A few little blemishes on the leaves. I thought that one's happy to get some fresh air. Do that one in one of these larger self-watering containers because they have much larger reservoirs in them. I'm going to make sure that there's plenty of the sphagnum in that mix. The regale, this one's going to want more water than the philodendrons. Look at those roots. Pretty nice looking. Have to remember to hold it back so it stays in focus. Isn't that nice? Good amount of roots on there. So yeah, the leaves don't look great from all the changes I are in my house over the last few days. That's such a nice root system on there that I'm not concerned about that at all. The Regale, he's, as far as the anthuriums go, they're thirsty ones. They put out really big, beautiful heart-shaped leaves. They're nice and long. Again, heavy veining. It tends to be a very impressive leaf on these. I love the nice, high-quality, long fiber sphagnum moss. It's so floofy and fun to work with. Uh, one thing about using the gravel that I should have mentioned, and this is supposed to be about the plants, but once I finish up with talking about the potting stuff, I won't talk about it anymore. You do have to be mindful and watchful with it in self-watering containers because it, well, it's really dirty and then you have really dirty water down here. So if you don't have to refill your reservoirs very often with self-watering containers, I would not use aquarium gravel, use aquarium gravel. You can buy this stuff brand new and it's great. You don't have to have it in a tank where it's getting full of all the muckies, fish poop and everything. But uh, with plants, that does tend to be something that they enjoy. But if it sits around in that stagnant water for a long time, it can get really gross and you have some bacterial issues. So it's just something to be careful with. The air's starting to get drier this time of year. And it's also quite warm outside still. It was cool, now it's warm again. So these will be getting refilled fairly often. By the time these go inside for the winter, I would like to think that most of the icky stuff will have flushed out. Cause I won't be refilling the reservoirs directly. I'll just be watering it from the top and letting them refill from down below, which reminds me I need to drill some holes in these so that I don't accidentally overfill them. Something that's really great about the Regale is the shimmer. You can kind of see it. There's some spots on the leaves, but you see it in there. That velvety crispness, there's that light silvery layer on top of the foliage. It's just a nice looking anthurium. Look at this one. See how big this is? That's a big, big plant. Actually for 45 bucks. That's the other thing. The prices were just great. There were so many aeroids there that would have cost some of them triple digits if I had gotten them online, not from Equigenera, but from a lot of other places. And like this great big one, only $45. This thing's huge. Still in hindsight, a lot of these plants about four years ago, if you were able to find them, they were not very expensive, but the challenge was being able to find them. You know, plants like the Gloriosum and those things, they were pretty cheap. This is a fun cross. This is a plum, I don't, I'm not, can I get in close enough? It's a philodendron plum, many I cross with a philodendron. Passes in them. Stands in them. Don't care how you say it. You know what I'm talking about. Get that out. Have a look at the roots. If there are any. Yeah, there are some roots in there. Nice thick cutting. Sorry it's so far away. 
But when I get up close, there's there's no way you'll be able to see it because the camera, it doesn't work from up close anymore because the lens doesn't work from up close. Oh, well now it decided to work. So that's the problem. It's just been very inconsistent. Philodendron doesn't like too much moisture. You can shake a lot of that moss out from the bottom. And then getting close to those leaves. Isn't that a beautiful leaf? I love it. Oh, I forgot, stay in focus. This has a mixture of a green and bluish silvery hue to the leaves. Again, great big heart-shaped leaves, just like all of them. There is a slight sheen to the foliage. My main thing is just the multi-tone of that bluish green gray mixed in with the gray, the splotchiness. It's so pretty. That's one of my favorite types of variegation to have in a plant, like my favorite hostas. <laughs> Might seem like a weird thing to compare to a philodendron, but I'm picky with variegations. I like for them to be pure, pure, pure white or very soft tones, no harsh yellows or anything like that. And this has that nice subtleness that you get with the uh, palmanii's and his tanzanums. Three great big leaves on here. And this seems disturbingly thirsty considering I had it in damp moss. Container's not going to be big enough. Maybe these ceramic ones might work. Yeah, eh, kind of. I hate when cuttings are like this because you almost have to plant them at an angle to get them to take off. And then you have to wait a while for them to start to move and then pull them up again and reorient them into a different pot. The joy of aeroids though, isn't it? And if I have to do all that, I may as well do it over here in this container where I'll be able to get it rooted in more quickly. Okay, yeah, that'll have to do. It fits in there fine. Fine enough to get things by for a few months, give it a chance to do some rooting and fill out that container and then I'll put it into something more substantial with a pull. That's a beautiful leaf, isn't it? Are you gonna focus? That's where the trouble comes in is when I try and focus from far away. I've wanted both for a while, so why not? just get the one that's across that will hopefully give me some of the good characteristics that you get from each one. Maybe, I don't know, we have to wait and watch it grow and see what happens with it. Okay, trying a different angle here, getting the pottery set up ahead of time so can speed things along. I was getting eaten alive over there by mosquitoes. I think the lighting over here is a little bit better. There's one. These things are really, really stuck together. Two, I decided that I would rather go with the square containers. Come on. There we go. That's better. The square containers because I can get them together on the shelves more easily. Once they're inside and out here, they're all going to be sitting out on my potting bench. I'll just take up less space. That's all. I think it makes more sense since the majority of the plants that are left are a little bit smaller than the ones I showed you. Not all of them. Some of them are kind of big. Who are you? Oh, this one next. This one, it was an impulse. I did not need this. I already have one, but it's one of my favorite philodendrons. It's a McDowell. Philodendron Dean McDowell. It's just a classic big, great big green heart shaped leaves with nice veining. You get it. Such a nice looking one. Like, look how cute and perfect that is. But you can actually see it. It's adorable. 45 bucks, not too bad. It's amazing how our perspectives shift of things when it comes to cost over time. The McDowell and the Glorios specifically, I've talked about this before, used to be so cheap compared to what they are now. I'm still happy that I could see one, find one with this much growth on it for $45 period. This has an okay set of roots on it. Trying to be gentle getting the moss out of there. Oh, that's perfect. Look at that. Perfect. Still has lots of room to grow. Pretty sure I'm going to need stakes to keep this one upright. This mix is airy enough. I'm not that concerned about planting it too deep. I could maybe go a little bit higher than that. And that would help hold it in place. But you couldn't, the leaf was in the way the whole time. Look at all that growth. Nice, healthy looking little plant for 45 bucks. Now I didn't need another one, but I'm glad that I have another one. The other one that I have is like three times the size. But this way I have one for the grow space that I can move in and out of the house and I have one that I can keep in the house. This will be great in my office. Might not be great in my office. There's not a ton of light in there. But somewhere around the house, that's going to be fun to have around. Going to wait for it to do some growing and get more rooted in that container. Who's next? I think I'm just going to set that right there for right now. That'll help hold that up until I find some stakes or a couple big rocks to put around the base of it. I think that was everything for 
Equa Genera. Okay, this next one, or really the next three, they're pretty ticked off at me. Holy cow, the air was dry in that house. There were a lot of temperature shifts and uh, they're fresh. So got some sad foliage on it, which I'm not shocked by with these next three plants because these next three plants are diva plants that I don't typically grow because we don't always get along, but they were cheap. So I thought, well, you know, there is a time to experiment and see how they're going to do. This is it. This is a Wauwkeanum narrow, right? Do you have a tag? Super narrow. You can see why it has that name because it's, well, it's super narrow. That is one skinny Anthurium. I got it because, well, one, it was a great price. It had a lot of growth on it, which I viewed as more room for air. Good thing that that's what I consider it to be. It's already ready to drop leaves. But the main thing that I liked about it was I saw all those roots coming out. And I was thinking, well, if I'm going to get one, this is probably the right time to grab one that's already potted up, even though I'm about to completely change that and repot it. One that I know already has a good amount of roots in it. There are a lot of roots in there. Try and come in closer, but y'all know how that's been going. You want to do it, camera? You want to show them? Yeah, see that? Good amount of roots in there. Nice and healthy roots. Get the big moss clumps shaking out of there. Look at all that. So many roots. I actually have to take some of the mix out in order to get this one to fit in here. Yeah, throw some moss on top of that container and there it is. Just have to give it time someday. It's gonna be a nice, beautiful, big plant with really, really long, gorgeous narrow leaves on it. Put the tag down in there, give it a sprinkle of gravel, help get those roots going. And I'm going to get those moved over to my gardening table. So I have more room over here. Okay, going to try this again. <laughs> Working with another new lens. I know, abrupt changes. I decided that it would be better if I got the rest of the plants potted up and then we just talked about them instead of doing it all at the same time and it got dark. Very dark. So I figured, great opportunity. Try out one of the other lenses and see if the camera's working with it. So right now, this is a Sigma DG 1.4 20 millimeter phenomenal lens. Amazing lens. It does make a clicking sound. If you use the auto focus in video modes, there's an adapter you have to, that's not what we're talking about right now. I'm so sorry. Whole point is it got dark with this lens. It lets in a lot of light and you get some really beautiful nighttime shots with it. And I figured, you know what? It might be kind of fun to look at these plants in the dark. Bring out the rest of them. Worry, right, I'll fix it up. I'll make sure it all looks nice. Start with this crispy one first. Very, very crispy one. My gosh. Can you guess what, what it is? Probably not because I had it backwards. This was an absolutely gorgeous Anthurium Luxurians Sharp when I got it. You can tell it's, it's it doesn't like me. Not off to a great start with this one, huh? Apparently that window I had these sitting in got more light than I thought. I think that it just got crispy. When I got this, the leaf on it was almost black. It was a dark, dark, dark jade. And this one is the sharp, meaning it's just a longer leaf than the normal luxuriance, so more long and narrow. It'll put out new leaves and it'll look fine. This needs some time. I'm not all that concerned about it just because I have been under the assumption with this one that it was going to be a diva and it would probably throw a fit when I brought it home and repotted it. So I was anticipating this probably losing all of its foliage anyways and needing to start over. You can see the leaves that are in the back that were not getting as much light look better. They're still cupped. I'm assuming from the dry air. Safe to say, this is not one that I will ever be keeping in my house. Not with the dehumidifier going. The growth space though in the winter time, nice and humid, usually between, uh, it varies from 60 to like 90% humidity. Uh, I think it will be happy out there. We will find out. I went just a smidge heavier with the moss in the mix for this one because the guy said specifically, don't let this one dry out very long. It won't be happy about it. He was certainly right about that. It's okay, it'll put out new leaves and look great. What do we think of the nighttime? I'm kind of liking it. I'm digging it. With this lens, you're seeing these in the same color and quality that you would be during the daytime. So I don't think anybody's losing any quality. I'm not being eaten alive and there's no background noise from construction work going on up the hill. Okay, next up, another Anthurium. This is Anthurium crystallinum silver. Can you see the silver? See the shimmer? 
would be easier if the foliage wasn't all bouncy and facing the wrong direction, right? It's just a crystallinum that has the extra sparkle to the veining in it. A relatively inexpensive, pretty easy to grow plant. The Carnivario, if that's how you pronounce it, I'm not sure, but they were there also, and they had these that were much, much, much smaller for the same price. But the glitter factor and the veining was insane. I even thought about maybe going back to grab one of those, but I just didn't have time. This one was the same price as theirs, which were in tiny little pots and so much bigger. And I went with the size over quality, which I shouldn't have done. But hopefully as this puts out more growth, that silver will start to come out. There is a really good amount of sparkle in the veining in here though. That's why this one's called silver, because it looks like there's glitter inside of the veining. Hard to show on camera. Uh, you just have to trust me, there's a lot of sparkle in there. That is a difficult one to show on camera because the leaves are sticking up. They will come down over time. See that shimmer? Oh, there it is. See the shimmer? Isn't that beautiful? Beautiful sparkly foliage, which is typical of any crystallinum. Okay, next up. Look at that. Isn't it beautiful? Is it in focus? I don't know. Since we're talking about the silvers, figure this would be a nice one to show next. This is a Gloriosum. That's also called silver. I put a spotlight over here. You see the spotlight? It's just helped drown out the shadow from the camera. Typical Gloriosum that has more of an intense coloration to the veining on it. There's a hint of silver <laughs> in the veining. It has an extra shimmer to it. You can see that. Look at that. You see how much light that reflects? The entire leaf, not just the veining. You can kind of see the silver in there somewhat. It's more just the intense veining on it. Nice big plant too. Look at that. Lots of growth on the inside. Really big leaves. I think it was like 30 bucks, if even $30. It was a great deal. It does have some blemishes on the foliage, but I don't care about that. It's just the same as I was saying for everything else. I generally assume there's going to be some leaf drop and uh, they're going to have to make some adjustments. Not that big of a deal if the leaves have some blemishes on them. All right, this is the last one. I'm really excited about this one. Isn't that a gorgeous leaf? How intense the white is on the veining and how fun and round each one of those big heart-shaped leaves is the hit. It's another Gloriosum. I know you're probably thinking what, what's with all the Gloriosums. I just love Gloriosums. It's one of my favorites. This is the Radiant Philodendron Gloriosum Radiant, also called the Zebra. It's a Gloriosum with extremely heavy veining. As these leaves get even larger, the white intensifies and there'll be even more veining on the inside. A lot of stripes and it makes for a lot of contrast. The silver and the radiant in the round are all Gloriosums that I've wanted to grow. I have a round, now I've got the silver. Now I've got the radiant or zebra. Two more wish list plants checked off. That's exciting. Everything else was not necessarily an impulse buy, but things where I needed to see them in person. I've seen them online and I just wanted to actually be able to look at them first before deciding to buy them. And the prices had to be right. Y'all know the cost on a lot of these plants has been outrageous over the last few years, but they were priced very well. The prices were fantastic. I'm just glad to have them. Fun things to add to the collection. Probably not going to be getting anything else for a while because as you can see, a good amount of what's here could use some TLC, right? That Anthurium and time of year is off. Usually I like to place an order for Aeroids around September to November because once November hits, shipping them is just really, really risky. And then I don't typically get anything else until mid spring. Sometimes I'll get impulsive and order something from somebody who guarantees me that they will pack them well and use a heat pack, but you know, not all that often. So this is probably the last hurrah for aeroids for a while. So it's just maintenance time. Take care of them, keep them clean, keep them pruned off, keep them watered, keep them fertilized and get some growth pushing out of these. Gosh, look at how insanely vibrant the veining is on that. That's beautiful. I had just to take a moment and sit back and look at it. Now that it's potted up, I can appreciate it. That is a beautiful Gloriosum. I cannot wait for those to put up some really big, nice, giant leaves. I suppose it's time to go ahead and get these put away. I also just realized the background noise from the pool might be pretty obnoxious. Sorry about that. And there's no autofocus and I'm walking. I can't adjust the lens. Just gonna have to go with it. I'll adjust when I set this down. Go ahead and put that back in there, not that you can see it. 
but you'll be able to in just a minute. Oh, it is actually almost pitch black over here. This is such a good lens. So this is where I'm putting the rest of them, assuming that they'll fit. Actually, I don't think I have room for the rest of them. I can get a couple more over here. Hopefully, I'm pretty sure I can. Very least wanna try and get the Gloriosums over there at the Anthurium. It might need its own special spot. It's so pretty, don't trip over the rocks. I actually have to use the camera to see where the gaps are over here to set these down because I can't actually see that with my naked eye. That's just black right there. Oh, freckles, freckles look so good in the nightlight. Go and now for the zebra. It's so pretty, I'm so, happy about this one. I'm happy about all of them, but this one in particular, it's one I've wanted for a long time. I almost just dropped it. Okay, how's that looking? That looks pretty good. Do I have room for the Anthurium? Eh, I don't think so. I think the Anthurium is going to end up sitting on the table tonight. And then I can get that set somewhere else in the morning because I really wanna be able to see like what I'm doing over there. It's very dark. I know you, you probably don't believe me, but it is dark, 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 dark over there. There are a few other places I could put that one. I want to make sure it's someplace where it's really by some misters that run heavy. And the ones over there run more moderate than heavy. I don't know if it needs to go heavy though. I don't want to rot it out either. Yeah, that one can hang out on the table until tomorrow. I can make sure that I have an appropriate spot for it. Thanks for hanging out. So if you throw the chaos, I know. There is a lot of chaos. Get this lens situation figured out. I was using this video as a way to test the different lenses. It'll help me make a decision as to whether or not I should go new lens and new camera or try and just go with all new camera. You see, I moved into the dark. You need to make an adjustment. You don't want to, that's fine. This still looks very pretty. Looks very nice. All right, I'm gonna wrap it up. Hope everybody's doing well. Comment down below. What are some of your favorite aeroids? You've been able to get some good finds at these various aeroid shows or pop-ups that you have in your area. Some experiences you have with some of the ones that I picked up today. Or just say hi. Love talking to everybody. I like to hear what's going on in your gardens. I know, not a typical Saturday vlog where I'm running around the backyard and doing things. It's been a while by the time this video comes out since I've done one of those because I was doing things at my sister's house two weeks ago, had the garden tour last week and now this, but there's just been so much noise and so much going on in my life when it comes to remodeling the house that I, just, I haven't had time to vlog. So this has worked out really well for me and uh, hopefully you all have enjoyed this kind of change of pace, but I think after this video, I'm gonna be getting back to doing some yard work because I have a lot of stuff out here that needs to be done and planted up. Things are kind of cooling off so it would be a good time to get moving with that. Just need to get out to the camera store and pick up a new lens or camera. I don't know, have to figure that out. So hope everybody's doing well, having a great day and a great life and everything's just going absolutely beautifully for you. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Oh, there's bird poop on that flower, my bad. Bye-bye.